I started here in 2012 and I got a call from then Michigan State Athletic Director Mark Hollis in 2013. And Mark was known for games on aircraft carriers and, and wild concepts that have generally worked um, from an ESPN perspective. He said, I have this idea. It's going to be Phil Knight's 80th birthday. What if we brought a bunch of teams to Portland and had a tournament? Um, the idea was great. Then the execution was another thing. But uh, once it was finalized in, I think it was 2014, it was three years of you know, doing something we hadn't done before. And it was... Uh, manifesting tickets in two buildings of different sizes and bringing in five top 10 teams to the market. Um, ESPN embraced it, Nike embraced it. And I think the, the thing we felt the best about when it was over is it did leave a legacy in the city. And for our student athletes that competed in the event now five years ago, still talk about how great an experience it was for them. It's a big deal, you know. It's uh, it's, it's national attention. Um, our guys get to play against the best, you know, players in the country. Um, you know, it, it's something that you know you look forward to as a player. You know, as a player, I never got to play against North Carolina. Um, I've never got to play against some of these schools that we'll, we'll have the opportunity to play against. And so I know the guys were really excited when that came out this summer. I, uh, our recruiting picked up a little bit, um, and, and a lot of our players called me. You know, maybe got maybe kept some of our guys in town. Um, but it, it's, it's a great experience for them. I'm really excited for a whole university because, you know, it's going to put a little bit more focus on our school during that time. It's going to be a lot of fun. So the last ev event ended, what, November 30, 2017? So probably a day or two after that. I don't think we thought at that time we would have 24 teams. I think for us, the planning has changed because there's games here. Last time through, it was just practices in Childs in the Beauchamp Center. But for us to have eight games over the four days in our building, I know our student workers are excited and our table crew is excited and our operations staff. Uh, to have ACC and Big 12 and Pac-12 teams in our building that weekend. Um, we treat it as another game to make sure that we're, we're providing fans the best experience, but it is something special. Well, I think it's it's a, it's a great opportunity, you know, um, to have it, especially a team like that. We're playing them kind of a, a, at home, right, in Portland. Our guys could sleep in their beds the, the night before and go play North Carolina. I don't think that that happens too often. And so having that opportunity for these young men to, to, to experience that, I think is something very special. Um, you know, Scott said it best, you know, five years ago, I mean, they're still talking about it, you know, the players that played in it. Um, I hear about it all the time, and uh, I still see some some gear around there. I know uh, Jason Bro, one of our guys that work with us, has some you know a big shoe in there, and so the guys are excited um, for the opportunity. Hope they give a lot. Hope they give us a lot of threes. Um, it'll be a lot of fun, and uh, you know I, I know you, you got to watch that. You get to watch certain programs growing up, and that's one of the ones. You know, you watch, you know, Michael Jordan, a lot of things like that. So I know the guys are pumped. I know I am. This was a hole missing in PK-80. Um, there was a PK-80 uh, women's event in 2017, but it was in Eugene. And frankly, I think it got lost. And most people didn't know it was happening. Uh, when the uh, West Regional Women's Basketball Championship came to the Moda Center a year or two after that, I think the light bulb went on for 
Sport Oregon and the Rose Quarter folks and myself that there needs to be a women's component of this. And then to get UConn and Oregon and some of the others is, is special. This is a legacy event. You think that the Women's Basketball Final Four is one of the crown events in all of collegiate sport and is the number one women's event in all of collegiate sports. So for us to say it was in the Rose City and UP and the Trailblazers and Sport Oregon and Travel Portland were part of it and to do this after COVID too, when we need that shot in the arm to say, we have an event that 30 other cities wanted, but we were one of the ones that, that got it is, is big time. Well, I was looking. I was looking at UConn. I mean, I, I growing up, I got to watch them play a bunch, and um, Sue Bird and, and and a lot of those, a lot of those players. As I, I was growing up, got to watch them. You know, didn't know too much as a youngster, but you always saw UConn on TV, and and they were coached by one of the best to do it. So it's exciting to be able to watch that team play, and so I'm looking forward to that. I hope there's three all by us, um, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I think, you know, getting to, you know, getting to watch Oregon um, play, I think they have a pretty good chance. They got a lot of length and they got some size to them. They'll be a pretty good team. Um, you know, watching, you know, getting the chance to play against Portland State, they, they play a different brand of basketball. They pressure a lot and, and uh, they, they go to the offensive glass pretty hard. So, you know, getting this, you know, the ball can fall either which way. You know, you really look at Oregon, though, and think they probably have a chance. We'll have to go with our WCC foe, um, who's playing another side of the bracket. I think they'll be pretty good. Um, Gonzaga has a pretty good shot, and you know, I mean, North Carolina, you know, was chosen number one in preseason. So I think those we, we get a chance to play both those teams this year. So I'm going to root for both those teams if we're not playing them. First, Jason, how important Nike has been to college basketball, college men's basketball and college women's basketball. To get some of these coaches to fly 3,000 miles to play in this tournament over Thanksgiving, there's probably one person they would do it for, and it, it's Phil Knight, right? For us, we uh, just signed a, a contract extension with Nike. or are working through the final stages. Uh, we've been with Nike over 20 years, and it started uh, with the great Clive Charles, and it's built um, from there. Uh, whether it be events we've done together, commercial shoots, photo shoots, things with soccer national teams, things with NBA teams. And if you walk over to Nike headquarters, within a minute or two, you will run into one, if not multiple, UP alums. So the connection runs deep. Just enjoying the process, you know. I talk to the guys about the journey all the time, about you know how quick it can go, how quick, how fast, how fast you can be done playing college ball. And so, you know, we take it day by day. Our team, man, we talk about it daily, and it's something that, you know, I think it's 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 something to cherish to be a student athlete in any sport because you know not everyone gets the opportunity to do it. And so, you know, as long as our guys are, are appreciating what they have, you know, and, and thankful and greatness, I mean, grateful for what, what's going on, I think it's a good deal.
Th thankful we're playing college basketball again. And Jason, I know you remember, what was it? Thanksgiving of 2021, I mean, we, were, we weren't sure if we were gonna play on a given day, who we were playing, where we were playing, <laughs> when we were playing. It's kinda cool to be back to, to quasi-normal again. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just fun to be back in these tournaments, getting the chance to play against you know, other teams, and you get to have your families out. You know, I think that's the best part, you having, being healthy and having your family around, I think you can't beat that.